Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my echoey new under construction radio room in Placer County, the city of Rockland here in California. Um, before I get into the video uh, and what I did in this room and before I run the little introduction thing, I want to say thank you to everybody who wrote what you are not aware of probably um, unless I sent an email to you. Uh, I finished the video and then had to go to the emergency room and spent the next several hours laying in one of those bed uncomfortable things uh, hooked up to, to monitors and uh, uh, it was good to get those videos or uh, rather those comments because as I did uh, it just helped a lot. So for everyone who wrote Thank you very much. I'll try to answer as many of them as I can. Uh, frankly, there were um, a few hundred uh, sent privately and through uh, through YouTube. But thank you very much. Appreciate it. I can't thank you enough. With respect to this room, I'll go into great de greater detail right after this. Whiskey 6 Lima calling CQ. Hello, CQ. CQ calling CQ. Hello, CQ. Whiskey Six Lima Golf. Whiskey Six Lima Golf. In this room, um, I did some unusual things, and you may or may not want to try them. With respect to the ground strap, um, a an RF ground is different from uh, an AC ground, and so I ran a separate RF ground using copper strap. And the reason why I did that was I had it. It had been on the shelf for probably 10 years. It's a large roll. It was real expensive, uh, relatively thick, and I just applied it and ran it out. Um, if I hadn't had it, I would, I would still have used a copper strap, but probably not, not as wide or not as expensive for sure. <clears throat> With respect to the foil that's on the polyextruded styrene, it comes that way. Um, it wasn't planned, it was just sort of serendipitous. And as to whether or not it does anything, um, I don't know. I'm not really looking to do a Faraday shield. I was able to buy this stuff from, uh, from Lowe's and put it up just for an attempt at soundproofing. So there's the sheetrock, the polyextruded styrene, R13, two layers of that, another sheet of polyextruded styrene, and then the sheetrock on the outside and the studs are, are separated. So the studs that hold the sheetrock and the polyextruded styrene that are in the room are separate from the ones on the exterior of the room. And that merely was for soundproofing because I didn't want uh, noise from in here to venture outside where my neighbors could hear it or that it would, if I'm in here in the middle of the night, uh, uh, bother uh, the other folks in the house. Um, with respect to the outlets, they are connected to a sub-panel. The reason why I ran a sub-panel was it's just the easiest way to do it. So it's a 50 amp sub-panel, has four breakers in it. I had to use half width breakers because the panel is really designed for two breakers and I needed four. So there's a double breaker for the 240 volt outlets and then two breakers, uh, one each for the computer desk and another one for the radio equipment and the reason for the 20 amp circuit is if you're going to run it go ahead and do 20 amps it's 12 to uh, 12 to with ground and that way if i have something that draws a fair amount of current like a, a linear amplifier that runs off 120 volts i can plug it in and likely it'll work fine there are 240 volt outlets uh, both 20 amp and uh, 40 amp um, just for experimentation and for running some Drake L4Bs. The door into the room is extra wide and it's a solid core door again looking for a little bit of sound resistance. Uh, it's extra wide because at some point I'm going to be in a wheelchair and I need a way to roll into here and that uh, there'll be a ramp and at the door it's going to be the same it is the same level on both sides so it's extra wide and we're going to try to work it out so there's room in the middle for me to uh, to turn around or rotate as needed 
lights in the room. There are track lights with uh, 5,000 degree Kelvin bulbs. There's three on each side and there's a couple on the wall to provide a lot of light in the room and I haven't got them set right yet. Uh, the cameras are mounted on tripods and those still need a little bit of work. Um, we're still taping and texturing the walls. Uh, I'm not good at doing either of those things, but it's it's getting there. Uh, the wall behind me is going to be the chroma key wall. It's going to be all green from end to end. End to end is not very far. The room is roughly 10 and a half feet by 10 feet on the inside. Um, it's real echoey because there's not much in the room. I've got uh, the sheetrock up and it's a concrete slab and there's nothing much on the ceiling. So nothing to break up the sound. And I'm holding the microphone because um, it's a good mic and it's the only one that would work with that camera uh, that I could grab a hold of. So on one side will be the um, video editing desk with a couple of computers and three or four monitors. Uh, the ham radio desk will be over here along again, uh, again uh, with a couple of computers and a couple of uh, screens. The Let's see, what else? Oh yeah, air conditioning. There is um, uh, what amounts to an air conditioner that it runs in both directions, so it's really a heat pump to provide uh, heating and air conditioning. Heat pumps are not real good for heating and it does not have uh, strips in it to provide extra heat, but um, the room is so small that a small uh, electric heater would work fine. It operates on a remote control, which I've kept on the front of the uh, sub panel just because there's a magnet in this thing and that's a good place to stick it. So I can turn it on, set the temperature, and uh, because it's above the door, it's not easy to get to. The ceiling of the room is about nine and a half feet tall. Um, the other thing I did was to put light switches at the entrance and another thing is there is a scuttle on the, of course, in the ceiling to provide attic access. It is a little on the small side. It's supposed to be 22 by 30, but it's not a required scuttle. So um, that's what it is. All right, that's where I am right now. And again, for all those who sent emails, uh, thank you very much. I can't tell you, it, it, it meant a lot to me. So for that, um, I'm very grateful. This is part two, and there'll be some other uh, updates as I make progress and start to put things in the room and then I can describe what I'm doing. It is the last day of the year, 2019. Tomorrow's 2020, hard to believe. 73 for now, I'm Jim, W6LG for your YouTube builder for Ham Radio Basics. See you the next time and again, thanks for watching.